Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and back for another educational lecture. So I know it's been a little while since I've done one, guys, maybe 10 days, maybe two weeks or so, um, but I got around to doing another lecture today that I think is a good one. And one of the reasons that I'm doing this is because I see a lot of people out there trying to piggyback off of my three bar and four bar play. In fact, it got so egregious, some person even used the term three bar play. And the reason I have an issue with this is it's okay if people wanna call it something different and have their own spin on it. But if you're going to call it a three or four bar play, it's mine and it has to be taught that way. Again, call your own trade something else, whatever you want to call it. But I just see some people just trying to take advantage of the popularity of the pattern so they can get more likes and more views on YouTube, which is a little bit pathetic. Okay. So before I get into that lecture, which is quite long, guys, this lecture is about an hour and a half to two hours. Yes, the lecture is that long. And what the lecture is about, guys, is all of the questions I've been receiving about this pattern. I've gotten about 20 or 30 different types of questions. I've gotten thousands of emails over it, but I've gotten about 20 different questions. So I picked the top 10 or 12 questions. For example, when do you enter a three bar play? Is the three bar play valid on different time frames like the daily chart, the two minute chart, the 15 minute chart, et cetera, and so forth? Um, also, what is shorting? Those types of questions, a lot of different questions. What platform that I use? Is the three bar play valid in Forex? Can you trade it on foreign markets? All of those types of things. So I've answered all of those questions as well as given a detailed description of exactly what the three bar play is if you thought the first video was impressive, this one is way better, it's twice as long. But before I get to that, I wanna show you three three bar plays that we traded this week. One, I traded today on Tesla, so let's put that one up first. Um, today, guys, we traded Tesla on the short side. Yes, you can make money when stocks go lower. It's called shorting, okay? We got in at $230.10. The stop loss was $231.30, and the stock tanked. I made over $600 on it. I had a little bit of a, a platform issue today where my platform froze up, so I didn't get my full target, which should have been about $750 or $800, but it is what it is, and we'll have to take the 600 bucks we got on Tesla today. And you can see right out of the book, wide range bar followed by two narrow range bars and then a drop. That was today. Yesterday on Caterpillar, C-A-T, I took another three bar play. The entry on that was $130.55 with a stop loss at $131.10. And what's important to note about this slide, because I put it on there, I put this out there on social media way before it happened, guys. It was on my gap list around 9 a.m. Then I commented to my traders in the room, guys, at 9.20ish, this is my favorite idea, guys. We have to find a way into Caterpillar today. And then 9.25, I put it on my favorites list with prices. So remember, the market's not even open at 9.25. It doesn't open until 9.30. And I'm already telling people the price point in which I'd like to trade Caterpillar, okay? And you can see another textbook three bar play. Wide bar, couple narrow range bars, drop, okay? And finally, uh, this week, we also took Halliburton, which was another three bar play at 2312 was the entry with a stop loss at 2290 and made another 600 bucks. Wide range bar, narrow range bar, blast off. The comment I'm making is, and it's part of the lecture you're gonna see is, three bar plays happen every single day. Every single day. There's not a day that goes by I don't find a three bar play or a four bar play, okay? so. I want you guys to watch this lecture because I'm tired of seeing other people out there trying to piggyback off of it and teach it improperly, okay? I didn't come up with every single thing. I've just made the three bar pattern better and I've used my own terminology called the three bar play, right? These types of patterns have been around for a long time. I've just perfected it, okay? So if it's not from live traders, it's not a three bar play the way I teach it. All right, so Jared Wesley, guys of Live Traders, stick around for the lecture. It's about an hour and a half of incredibly good information, guys. I even took three or four slides out of the Professional Trading Strategies Manual. It's 525. I used about four or five of those slides. Um, but overall, this lecture is about 80 pages, guys. In my opinion, it's better than most of the paid courses you've taken out there. It's that good, in my opinion. All right, so 
have a good one, guys, and uh, watch out here for the three-bar play lecture. If you want a $1 30-day trial into the chat room, email info at livetraders.com. $1 30 days in the chat room. See you on the flip side. Um, so I put out a video a few months back on the three bar play and it got, um, you know, it got pretty popular. A lot of people liked it because of the simplicity of it. Um, so I thought it would be a good time to go over a lot of the questions that I got. I got literally thousands, no, no joke, thousands of questions. Uh, and there were five or 10 that just kept popping up the same five or 10 questions that kept popping up. So I thought it would be good to go over the three bar play as well as some of the questions that people were asking, like the platform that I use and what's the exact entry on a three bar play and what's your target, uh, and then use some recent trades that I've taken. In fact, we took a three bar play today on Tesla. Tesla was actually a four bar play on the two minute chart. Okay, so we'll talk about that as well. Um, the other thing I wanna get on, so I don't have, um, can you enter presentation mode? I don't really feel like it because I want to see the slides on the left-hand side, uh, Peter. I mean, you know, you'll just have to deal with it being 80% of the screen instead of 100% of the screen. Um, in all the years I've been doing this, you're the first person to ever actually ask me that. But anyway, um, I get people saying, oh, well, you make it sound so simple. But as you can see, part of the title here is trading is simple but not easy. Trading is not easy, okay? It's a very challenging business. So you've been warned. Absolutely, you've been warned, guys. Trading is hard, okay? I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not telling you, oh, it's kind of hard. It's a little bit challenging. Trading is hard, okay? It's not some get-rich-quick business. It takes years to get good at. Most people fail because they risk too much money too soon. You want to know why 90% of traders fail? Is because they risk too much money too soon. You guys should not be risking any more than 5 or $10 per trade when you are new, period. I don't care if you have a $2 million account. You should be risking 5 or $10 per trade when you're new. None of this, oh, I just turned $426 into $2 million in 38 days. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and uh-huh again, okay? Um, most of the online marketing suggests you know, how easy this business is. And I've been guilty of it too at times, okay? But please know this is a very challenging business, okay? Money management is your number one job, okay? Number one, ma or money management is your number one job. Now, having said all of this, trading is hard. It's a wonderfully rewarding business. How many businesses do you know of that you can do from anywhere in the world with an internet connection and a laptop and make a living at it anytime you want? Not too many. Why do I say this? Because, well, there's obviously gonna be a learning curve for a business that provides that level of income and that level of flexibility, it's going to be challenging, okay? So, one other thing. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness, okay? This is an important slide because recently, in the last few weeks, I've seen some people blatantly copying this, literally calling their trade the three-bar play. One, that, that term three-bar play was coined by me, okay? I've seen different names used for this pattern in the past, but never the three-bar play. And I recently saw when somebody just blatantly take that name, three-bar play. Um, and the reason I got upset is, it's fine if you want to copy. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but don't misteach it. Don't misteach it. Okay, don't misinform people that are watching your video what a true three and four bar play is. And that's basically what I was seeing. Um, okay, so I, today we're going to dispel those myths and misinformation. And you're going to learn it properly, exactly the way the pattern is supposed to be applied. Okay, um, so I'm just making the point that I've seen it out there and people are just trying to piggyback off the name so they can get more clicks on their YouTube videos, which is just egregious. Okay, all right. So here's some of the things we're going to discuss today, guys. Like I said, it's there's a lot here. What is a three-bar play? The basic setup is the wick part of the bar. That's a question I've been getting all the time. Exactly when to buy and some of the nuances, okay? Is the three-bar play valid in all time frames? We're going to talk about the time frames and styles. How do you determine the target on the three-bar play, okay? Basic management strategies. Does it work in Forex? 
options in crypto. We'll talk briefly about that because I get this. I probably get this question. Does it work in Forex? Maybe more than any other single question I get, perhaps. Okay. Um, how do you find them? I, this is probably the second most asked question. How do you find them scanning wise? Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about scanning options and choices, how to keep things simple. What is shorting? I see a lot of people not understanding how to make money when the market goes lower with the three bar play. What platform do I use? I use TradeStation, but we'll talk about that. And then not all trades work. Some people are like, well, it's great, Jared. You showed all winners. Well, I'll show some losers today too. Okay. So let's dig in guys to exactly what is a three and four bar play. Okay. What is this pattern that's been talked about so much? This next slide is directly out of PTS. Okay, this slide is directly out of PTS. Okay, remember I said there's about five or 10 slides out of 525 that are directly out of the course book. This is one of them. Okay, the three and four bar play guys, one of the most important aspects of this pattern is the number one bullet point right here. Bar number one, this is extremely important. I'm Tired of people sending me three bar plays that are not three bar plays. Bar number one must be, not should be, not might be, not could be, must be a wide range igniting bar, right? It has to be igniting a new move, all right? You're not going to get a three bar play that's up seven bars in a row, magically puts in a little red bar and then goes higher. I've been getting a lot of that where people are showing me moves that are up four bars. There's a tiny little red bar after four huge bars. And then, oh, look at the four bar play. Look at the three bar play. Okay. That is not it. Okay. So igniting bar means, just in case you're not sure, the first or second bar of a move. This is extremely important. It has to be the first or second bar of the move. Okay. Wide range bar means it should be, should be at least double the size of an average bar. Now, the reason there's not a number attached to this is because every stock is different, right? A wide range bar on Amazon might be $4. A wide range bar on Bank of America might be 25 cents. Right. So just take a look at the rest of the bars on the chart. Take a look at the rest of the bars on the chart and go, wow, the average bar looks to be about 20 cents. Wow, this bar is 50 cents. That would be a wide range bar, roughly double the size of an average bar. OK, this bar should have increased volume, but it's not required. Increased volume equals increased commitment. Volume is commitment or lack thereof commitment. Okay. So I'm spending so much time on bar one because this is the bar most people mess up. Okay. Most people seem to understand bar two and three. They mess up bar number one. And there's going to be enough examples today that you should never mess up bar number one ever, 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 ever again. Okay. One of the things I would like you guys to do, and I'll repeat this later on, is when you decide in your trading plan that you might want to take a three bar play. Say that's part of your trading plan. Cause there's a lot of different patterns we teach at live traders. Okay. You want to take a picture of a perfect three bar play and you want to put it on your wall. You want to take a picture of a perfect three bar play and you want to put it on your wall. And every time you go to take a three bar play, look at the wall and go, do these pictures match? Does the picture on my platform match the picture on the wall? Okay. All right. So, one of the things that's also important, guys, all right, and John, I was going to get to that later, but I'll get to it now. I actually have a slide over it. The wick is part of the bar. Unfortunately, none of these have wicks on them. You will see some examples, but the little topping tail, little bottoming tail is part of the bar. Okay, guys, this is just the body of the bar, but the entire range of the bar includes the wick on the candlestick. It absolutely includes the wick on the candlestick. So if the body of the bar high is $50, but the total high is $50.20, you use $50.20 because that's the high of everything. All right, now on to bar number two and three. Bar number two and three must be in the upper 
of bar number one. What that means is if I go down to the example here in the bottom left, you see a green bar, a red bar, and a green bar. That means this red bar has to be at least in the top half of the green bars range. So let's just say this bar is $1. This wide range green bar is $1. That means the red bar has to be in the upper 50 cents because that's the upper 50%. Otherwise, it's not a resting bar. It's an engulfing bar. Okay, so bar number two, and if it's a four bar play, bar number three as well, if it's a four bar play, they have to be in the upper 50%. It's preferable, hear me out, it's preferable if they're in the upper 25 or 30%. The smaller this bar is, the better, right? And now obviously we'll talk later about spreads and things of that nature, but as long as it's in the upper 50%, you're good, okay? They should have, relatively equal highs okay so if the high of bar number one is fifty dollars you want the high of bar number two to be about fifty dollars if it's at you know 50.02 or 49.97 that's fine but if bar number one high is 50 bar number two high cannot be fifty dollars and fifty cents that's fifty cents different Okay, it's 50 cents. They have to be relatively equal highs. Now, obviously, if it was on a daily chart, you'll be a little bit more flexible. If you're trading a two-minute chart, pennies matter. Nickels matter, okay? So it has to be in the upper 50% of bar number one, and it has to have a relatively equal high. Okay, bar three and four now. This is the trigger bar. This is the entry bar. This is the trigger bar. This is the entry bar. Yes, I repeated myself. The stop loss goes under the lowest bar. Whether that's bar two or bar three, the stop loss goes under here. The question I've been getting frequently is, when do you get in? You get in the nanosecond that bar number three breaks the high of bar one and two. As soon as bar three breaks the high of bar one and two, you enter the stock and you place your stop loss down here below bar number two. You enter as soon as it breaks the high of bar one and two and you put your stop loss below bar number two. That's it. If it's a four bar play, you enter the same way. You get in above bar number one or two and your stop loss goes below the lowest of these two bars. If bar number two is lower than bar number three, you go below that. If bar number three is slightly lower than bar two, you go below that. Entry right here, put my cursor on it right there, stop loss down here. Note, the color of bar number two or three doesn't matter. I don't care if bar number two is a green bar. I don't care if it's a doji bar. I don't care if it's a bottoming tail bar. I don't care if it's a topping tail bar. I don't care if it's a red bar. As long as it has a relatively equal high and is in the upper 50% of bar number one. I'm speaking slow and clearly because I don't want you guys to mess this up. The play is valid on longs. It is also valid on shorts. We did it today on Tesla, right? Did it today on Tesla, okay? Real quick, oh, I don't have it up. Let me pull it up just real quick. Hold on one second, guys. Where are you at? That's the Tesla trade. We made money with a stock going lower. Wide range bar, two narrow bars with relatively equal lows and the stock dropped, okay? We did it today on Tesla, okay? All right, now let's move on. Let's look at some examples. So now you have the basic criteria. This is right out of the manual, guys. I'm giving you a page out of a $2,000 course right here, okay? Right out of the manual. Bar number one must be a wide range igniting bar, okay? It's best if it's clearing resistance. I'm gonna show you this in a couple minutes. So here we go, okay? Now I want you to take note of this red line that goes across the screen. What is this red line? It's resistance. See how it says wide range bar breaks above resistance. Okay. Wide range bar breaks above resistance. Okay. That red line is where the sellers are. So notice this bar rips, takes off right off the open. 
it breaks above this area. Now, why is this important? Because this red line is where the sellers are. So if you take out all the sellers, you have room to freely move higher. We call this void. All this white space up here is called void. We broke through the resistance, okay? After this wide range bar, guess what? You're probably a little bit tired, right? If you ran a marathon, you'd be a little bit tired too. So before the stock continues higher, we'd like a small resting period, but we don't want the resting period to come all the way back down to the lows because that would mean what? It's not as strong as we thought, right? This wide range bar by definition shows strength. Why? One, it's wide range and two, it broke resistance. So breaking resistance and being wide range on volume by definition is strength, okay? So you want the next bar to just be a short resting bar in the upper range, the upper 50%. Just enough time to catch your breath so you can continue along your journey higher. So wide range bar number one is the igniting bar. Bar number two is the resting bar. And bar number three is the continuation of the move. So bar number one is wide range. Bar number two is narrow range in the upper 50%. Bar number one and two have equal highs, relatively equal highs, void above. I prefer them at half numbers and whole numbers, but it's not a requirement. You buy here at 67.50, you put your stop at like 67.20, and look at that, $2.50. And this is on a 15-minute chart. So this one happened at like between 10 and 10.15 in the morning, this triggered. It didn't happen right off the open. It happened at 10 to 10.15, Okay. Let's take a look at some examples, all right? Here is a four bar play. Now, one of the things I want you to notate on these, I'm not taking these in vacuums. This is important, guys. I'm not just pulling up a two minute chart. I'm using the 60 minute time frame to see the bigger picture. We call it the top down approach. You start with a daily chart, or a 60 minute chart. I will talk about this and discuss this when we get to the scanning section. You start with a 60 minute or a daily, and when you have void or a nice gap, then you can drill down and look for a three or four bar play. So if I look at the 60, this stock is breaking support. See the pivot support here? Pivot support here, pivot support here. You're breaking under this. Under 266, this stock has room down to 260. Call this void. So this is my tradable void. This is the range in which this stock should drop, okay? It's the range in which this stock should drop. So notice what happens. On the gap down, we break 266. Now, take a look at the bar compared to the rest of these bars. That's a wide range bar. See the rest of these bars over here? And now you look at this bar. So you're breaking 266, breaking it, okay? That means we're, we're in the clear now. We broke this support area right here at 266. See it? Sweet. Now that we've broken it, it's time to look for a pattern. It's time to look for a pattern. Okay? So we get a wide bar followed by a narrow bar, and in this case, another narrow bar. So this is actually a four bar play, right? We're going to get in right below the low of bar one and two. They have relatively equal lows. They're not perfectly, but they're close. I'm going to get in right in that 265 area. I got filled about 10 cents late. I got filled at 264.90. Put my stop up here around 266. It's a little below that area. It's more like 265.75, right? Okay. And then you're going to let this thing drop. Now, why is it able to drop? Because the 60-minute chart has room to drop. You would never take one of these into support, right? If support was like 265, we would never take this. But we have $6 to play with, but we only need $2. So we're well within that acceptable range. And you can see I made 878 bucks on this thing. And we did it pretty quickly, right? I mean, it's a two-minute chart. So in about 15 minutes, we're out of this thing. Okay? Real examples. Now, one more thing. Okay? Entries are always stop limits. Stop losses are always stop market orders. Entries, you always use a stop limit order. Protective stop losses, you always use a stop market order, okay? Now, 
I've put various ones from various dates in here. Why did I do this? Like this was from September of last year. And some people go, oh, Jared, that's old. I did it on purpose. Why? To show you they worked a year ago. They worked five years ago. They worked today on Tesla. They worked yesterday on Caterpillar. So I varied the dates on these on purpose to show you that this isn't something that just started happening today. And it wasn't something that happened five years ago and no longer works today. Okay, because people say, oh, that's old, Jared. Well, we took one today on Tesla and we took one yesterday on Caterpillar. Okay, that's why I did it. Now, let's take a closer look at one. Let's take a closer look. I took a vacuum picture of one so we get a close look. The support here is like 195.50, right? We gap down and once you get under this area, there's nothing but space here, right? There's nothing but space here. So a wide range bar breaks below this area. So once we break support, now it's time to look for a pattern, right? Any pattern, in this case, a three bar play. Wide bar, take a look at the size of that bar. It's like a dollar 25. Look at the size of the rest of these bars, right? So this is a wide range bar. It's at least twice the size of an average bar. Then we follow it by a narrow range bar. Another technically could be a narrow range bar or the entry. I think it, it just peekabooed to the entry. They have relatively equal lows, not exactly to the penny, but within a, a nickel or a dime in this case. It's a one dollar stop loss. One ninety four sixty is the entry. One ninety five um, forty, so an eighty cent stop loss. And look at this thing tank. It's a two minute chart, guys. So in two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, forty, six, eight, I don't know, twenty five minutes, this thing dropped five dollars, give or take four dollars. That's what five to one on your money. Okay, five to one on your money. All right, guys. They happen on all stocks. They don't just happen on high price stocks. They don't just happen on low price stocks. They even happen on Google and Amazon and Facebook. And they even happen on the queues and they even happen on the spy. Okay. Do you understand what I'm coming here? They happen on all price stocks, all priced stocks. I put these three up here because this happened to be on the same day in June, this past June, a month ago, right? Three bar play on Facebook, three bar play on Amazon, three bar play on Google. I only took the one on Facebook that day. You could have taken all of these. And I even wrote in the room, stock Amazon under 1755. We took this one. There it is. Facebook short 173.20 by 174. They're all, these are two minute charts. This is a five minute chart. So they're not happening at exactly the same time. But look at this, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 minutes in. And again, you have a three or four dollar move, which is about four to one on your money, give or take. Okay. Now you've seen a lot of short plays, short, short, short. They happen on the long side too, right? Here's one on Disney, right? Here's one on Disney, right there. I, I blew it up so you guys could see it. That's what it looks like on my screen, but I blew it up. Wide range bar followed by a narrow range bar, blast off. The only negative here is this second bar might be slightly under the 50% mark, slightly. But it was so good I couldn't pass it up, right? And I called it in the room, 138.40 by 137.87. They happen on the long side. They happen on the short side. They happen on high price stocks. They happen on low price stocks. Okay. Here's another one on the short side, guys. Again, I'm putting the daily chart in here so you can see. You start with the daily. Look at this gap. You're gapping under one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green bars. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. If you bought low the day before at $110, thinking, Oh, it's going to go up to 120 or 130. Okay. Let's just say, imagine hypothetically, you bought low yesterday at 110 and you wake up today and it gapped down to 100. You're 10% down overnight. How are you feeling? You're probably uttering some four letter word that's inappropriate. But for our purposes, this is money. We are taking advantage of somebody else's misfortune because many of these people will panic and they will sell their stock. They'll panic, okay? The average person, I'm sorry to say this, I apologize for saying it, the average person is an idiot when it comes to the stock market. Do you know how many people out there said in 2008 and nine, they'd never invest in the stock market ever again for the rest of their lives? Thousands, millions of people did that. The market's up six to one since the bottom, seven to one since the bottom. How's that working out for you guys that never invested in the market ever again? Okay? So my point is, is a lot of these people will get out. It gaps down under support and all of this green. That's huge shock value. So we have room from roughly, okay, what is that, 104 
down to the pivot support at 98. Roughly 104 to 98. That's our tradable range. So what do we do? We wait for the stock to get in the tradable range and we trade it. So we get a wide bar, narrow bar. This one triggered, chopped a little bit and then went. So this one took a little bit longer, maybe 40 minutes. Okay. It was a $1 stop loss and this thing went down, ooh, I don't know, about $2.50, two and a half to one. Okay. Made 450 bucks on it. Okay. Bar number two can be any color, guys. Bar number two can be any color. Real quick, for those of you that missed it. Note, the color of bar number two really does not matter. I put it in there in pink. It does not matter. Okay? All right. Apple. Here's one on Apple. We start with, magically, the daily chart, guys. Okay, you're gapping over one red bar, two or three red bars. What's above here? Nothing. Once you get over 209, 210 right here, nothing's above this. Okay, nothing is above this. How do you decide your exit? We'll talk about that in the management chapter, okay, which is coming up in a little bit. All right, so gapping up to 210, there's nothing above. So what do we do? We wait for it to get above 209.50 or 210 and we look for an entry. Okay. This is the resistance. This big pink line is the resistance. We get above it, we look for an entry. Wide range bar followed by a narrow range bar. The entry is 212. The stop is 211. Rip. It went $3. It went 3 to 1 on your money. Now, this was a 15-minute play. It happened to right around 10 a.m. You had to sit on this for two hours. But, hey, two hours for 2 to 1 isn't bad. It's better than digging ditches. Okay? This was the pre-market scan of this. Apple was near the top of my pre-market scan. Look at the volume. So I found it on my dollar gainers and losers, which we'll talk about later. I love the gap. And I said, sweet, we have to put this in our list. And then it forms a three bar play. Okay. Beautiful. Simple. Now, next chapter. Is the three and four bar play valid in all time frames? I get this question so frequently, it's not even funny. I understand why people ask the question. They ask the question because a lot of the examples that I give are on one minute, two minute, and five minute charts. So they think it's only valid on like two and five minute charts. The only reason I, you see so many of those examples, guys, is because I trade the market open. I trade from 9.30 to 10.30. So I'm not going to really be in too many 15 minute three bar plays because well, I'm usually finished trading by then. But the answer to the question is, wait for it in case, there you go. Yes, it's valid in all time frames. Okay, all time frames. In case you don't believe me, let's run down about 15 slides very quickly because we'll be here till tomorrow if I don't do it quickly. Okay, wait for it. Oh, there's Netflix on a one minute three bar play. Okay, from June, wide range bar, narrow range bar. Notice it triggered and got choppy. See the topping tail got a little, a little nervous when it triggered, but it triggered, rip. Okay, guys, this thing went from 345 to like 352. $7 move on a dollar seventy-five. It made 700 bucks on this one. Okay, wide bar, narrow bar, rip. That's a one minute. Okay, in case you think it's a fluke, this was yesterday on Caterpillar. Yesterday on Caterpillar. Okay, wide range bar, two narrow range bar. Sorry, it's so small. Sorry, it's so small. And we shorted at 130.55 by 131.10. Made another 770 bucks on this thing. Okay. This happened yesterday on Tesla today. That was another one minute chart. Okay. Oh, that was a two minute actually. So you just saw two one minutes. Now let's move to the two minute. Ooh, this is a two minute chart. Okay. Look at this bad boy. Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. I made four grand on this. All right. I made four grand on this. This is a few years back. Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. See the daily breakout? It's pretty sweet. That's a two minute. Okay. Let's do it again. Here's another two minute chart. Okay. Wide bar, two narrow bars drop. That's a four bar play. Four bar play. Now, why was it so potent? See the green line? See support? You're dropping under support. So we've seen two one minute examples. We've seen two two minute examples. Now, what's next? Oh, another two minute example. Okay. See the gap? See the three bar play. Okay. Let's go to a five minute example. Here it is on a five minute. Okay, there's the daily gap, gapping over a topping tail and three red bars and a pivot. 
It always starts with the higher time frame. It always starts with the higher time frame. Then you drill down to the lower time frame. So what do we have here? Wide range bar, two narrow range bars, rip. That's a five minute time frame. Okay, 79 entry by 78.50, it went to 82 bucks. That's $3, that's six to one on your money. But for those of you that are jittery, the first five minutes paid you a dollar, paid you two to one almost in five minutes. You could have added over 80 bucks if you wanted to, but that's a different topic for a different lecture. Great daily, great intraday, that's the five minute. What's it up? Look at this, another five minute, right? Gap down, support was at $17. Support's at 17 bucks. Gap down, wide range bar, narrow range bar. Now this one's a little different only because again, the topping tail was not in the bottom 50%, right? You could have argued to take this one right here and this thing just tanked. Now what? Here's another five minute free bar play. Wide range bar, narrow range bar, rip, right? Wide range bar, narrow range bar, rip, that's five minute. Now what are we up to? Now we're on the 15 minute, okay? I'm systematically going through each time frame to show you that these happen on any and all time frames. What do we have to break? Resistance. See the, the pink line right there? Wide range bar takes out the pivot. Narrow range resting bar with a relatively equal high. Okay. Rip. Okay. Rip. All right. Next. Oh, 60 minute. We're up to the 60 minute now. We have two examples here. One, take a look at the wide range red bar. What's it taking out? Support. See the pivot support that bounce? See the pivot support that bounce? Right in that 105 area, give or take, wide range red bar takes out two pivots. Narrow range resting bar, and we have room down to what? At least 101-ish, maybe 100. We're taking out support. We have room down to 101, maybe 100. Okay, wide bar, narrow bar, drop. 60 minute chart. Oh, here's another one. See the consolidation resistance area right at like 61.50? You want to get above the red bar here. Pink bar, whatever color that is. Wide bar does what? Ignites a new move out of this range into the void above, followed by a narrow range resting bar. Get in at 62.50. You're stopped 62. You're up to 64.20. 60 minute. We're not done yet. What? Oh, this is a daily chart. Okay. Are you guys getting the picture here that these happen on any and all time frames? Is this enough examples to tell you? This wide range bar breaks out. I should have put a line on it. This breaks out wide range followed by a resting bar, narrow range, rip. You're in it like 1825. You have a 50 cent stop and it's at $30 two, four, five days later. Guys, that's like a $12 move on a 50 cent stop loss. What's that, like 25 to one on your money? 25 to one on your money? Just in case you thought maybe that was a fluke, here's another one on the daily chart. Wide range bar takes out this pivot, takes out this pivot right there, okay? Followed by two resting bars, so it's a four bar play. Rip, consolidate, rip. If you held this thing for like three months, you're looking at what, 27 to 50? You're looking at a $23 move on a $1.50, so you're looking at a 15 to one on your money, okay? And we're not done, one more, one more. Even happens on the weekly time frame. Happens on the monthly, happens on the yearly too. What do we have? A wide range bar breaking out of a double top resistance area, right? The stock smacked its head at like 975 and pulled back, came all the way back up and consolidated for several months. This is a weekly chart. I blew it up so you could see it. It broke out of this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen weeks. That's over over three months. Consolidation breaks out. Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. Okay? It's a 35 cent stop and it's at like eleven fifty. So you're a dollar twenty five up on a thirty that's like four to one. So I think I've made it clear. I've answered the question does this happen on all time frames? The answer is emphatically yes. What's the next question? How do we determine the target? How do we determine the target? I try to keep it simple. Some of you will be more complicated. That's up to you. 
Guys, there's a million ways to manage. Here's just a few. In PTS, there's twice as many ways as this. There's all or nothing, bar by bar, pivots, sell into strength, combination, hybrid approach. The question, the only question that matters is which one is best for you. And the next slide is very, very important, guys. It's out of PTS. I told you I took five or 10 slides out of there. Imagine what the other 520 are like, okay? It's extremely important, okay? I want you to pay attention to this. All right. Trade management considerations. Guys, trading is all about expectation when it comes to management. What are you expecting from the trade? And are those expectations in alignment with your trading style and strategy? Here's the thing I'm getting at. You can't do two things at the same time. Let me explain. You cannot maximize profits and protect everything at the same time. You cannot do both. You cannot protect everything at the same time and maximize profits. Why? Because stocks wiggle. There is occasionally where they just hit and run and never look back, but that's not normal. So when you go into a trade, you need to know yourself very well. Are you a jittery person? Or are you a relaxed person? Can you handle giving back profits while shooting for larger targets? Can you handle taking profits earlier than watching the stock move higher? What type of person are you? Where do you fit into this give and take spectrum? Because remember, you cannot try to go for a huge 10 or 20 hour move and protect every penny along the way. You can't do it. Okay? So you have to find a balance. Trade management is all about balance, but to know that balance, you must know yourself, know your style, and know your time. For example, guys, I trade 45 minutes to an hour a day. How would I do if I said I'm going to do 15 minute bar by bar as a trail stop? 15 minute bar by bar. It would never work for me, ever, because I'm gone in 45 minutes. So I'm not even going to give the stock time to set up and, and move in the direction it needs to move up in. Right? So in my time constraints, 45 to 60 minutes a day, I could never use that particular management because I'm not around long enough. I'm not at my desk long enough. I hope this is making sense to you. Okay? Now, if you're a super jittery person, you're probably not going to want to manage on five minute pivots because five minute pivots take a long time to form. An, an average pivot takes at least four or five bars to form. Well, that's at least 20 minutes. And you're a jittery person. So if you're a jittery trader, you might want to try either doing short term all or nothing. Or perhaps one or two minute bar by bar. But understand, if you're a jittery person who's not going to trade for a long time, perhaps an hour a day, guess what? You're never going to be a trader who gets huge targets. There's nothing wrong with this, but what, where the problem comes in is when people don't match their personality and time constraints with their trading style. Let me repeat because it's re like one of the biggest nuggets you'll ever need to learn in trading. The problem with traders lies in when they try or they make the mistake of not matching their personality and their time constraint with their trading style okay it's very important so everything is a give and take you can't maximize profits and completely protect gains you can't completely protect profits and expect to maximize gains and this is the one issue that i have with most traders don't force a system on yourself see when i first started trading i almost i almost quit because somebody told me hey jared if you want to be really profitable you need to manage on 15 minute pivots it's like the only way to make a ton of money so I thought, well, that's it. That's the only way I can do it. You know what the problem was? I really couldn't do it. I had a very hard time. 15 minute pivots just took too long. I was too, too jittery of a trader, too nervous of a trader. And there's no way I was going to sit there for five hours waiting for those pivots to form. That person may have been right that that was a profitable management strategy. But what they failed to tell me was there are many other ways you can make money in this business. You don't have to marry one approach. 
okay? You don't have to marry one approach. So the approach I tell most traders, this will answer the question. The approach that I tell most traders to use is all or nothing. Specifically to our all or nothing. It's the approach that Unmall uses. It's the approach you guys just hit target on BYND on. Now, how does it work? It is insanely, incredibly, amazingly simple. These are the only three things that can happen to you. Ready? You'll stop out on the trade. It just won't work. You'll hit your target on the trade because it will work. And if between 9.30 and 4 o'clock, it doesn't stop out or it doesn't hit your target, you'll just get out at 3.55. That's it. They're the only three things that can happen. There are, there's nothing else that can possibly happen unless you make a mistake. You will either stop out on the trade because it didn't work. You will either reach your target because it did work. Or you'll get out of the position five or ten minutes before the market opens. That is it. That's it. Set your bracket order, set your target, set your stop, and walk away. You don't even have to be there. Because, wait for it, you can set a bracket order that closes at the market at the end of the day. Yes, you can do that. Many of you don't know that. You can set a bracket order that literally closes at the market close. So it'll either stop you out. You don't have to worry about it. It'll hit your target. You don't have to worry about it. And if you're not around because you're on the golf course, it'll automatically hit market at the end of the day. 359. Why is this important? It's important because for those of you who are poor trade managers, I'm not a great trade manager. I'm a great stock picker, not a great trade manager. It allows you to, quote, set it and forget it and walk away. Why is this important? Because the more you stare at your trades, the more you mess them up. And you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who have been trading for a little bit, you stare at them and what do you do? You nickel and dime them. You raise your stop when you shouldn't. You get out a little too soon. You sell shares when you're not supposed to. Or you don't take a stop loss. If you just set your bracket order and leave, say you're in two or three trades and you're like, all right, and set your bracket and leave. Now you can't mess it up. It's not up to you anymore. And one last comment. Most people can't beat it. Most traders I've met do not beat all or nothing. 2R, shoot for two to one targets. So if your stop loss is 50 cents, your target's $1. If your stop loss is 28 cents, your target is 56 cents. That's it. It's a two to one target. That is it. You set the stop, you set the target, and you, you don't touch it. You don't touch it, okay? If you're still in it when the market closes, you either get out manually or have your bracket order exit you at the end of the day. Most people cannot beat this. So that answers the question. What management do you use? Just two to one, set it and forget it, okay? I don't use this exact management. Unmall uses this exact management and he banks R on it. It's crazy, okay? Here's an example. Wide bar, narrow bar, set it and forget it. Now, why did I put this in here? For two reasons. One, to show you it works. And two, to show you sometimes you'll leave money on the table. Guys, I don't care. When I hit my target, I don't care if I leave money on the table because I hit my target. Some of you have that FOMO. Many of you have that FOMO. This is why you chase trades because you have FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. And many of you can't handle when a trade hits your target and then goes like $3 higher. I've never understood that because to me, that's arrogance. And you're going, what do you mean, Jared? That's arrogance because you thought you were good enough to hold it for that $3 target. If you were, you would have done it, but you didn't. Make sense? Once I get a target, I don't think about that stock at all in the sense of fear of missing out. If it goes $27 higher, who cares? I got my target. I got my predetermined target. I'm not Nostradamus. I can't predict the future. So when I got in, my goal was two to one. If I leave that trade with a two to one winner, I did what I came to do, period. So why would I be upset if I did what I came to do? Too many traders get upset, okay? David P, if you want a bar by bar trail it up, go for it. I don't have a problem with it. I told you guys before and I'll show it again. There's lots of different ways to manage. All or nothing, bar by bar, pivots, sell into strength, hybrid approach. There's tons of different ways to manage. I'm just telling you that 99% of traders I've met can't beat this. Don't beat this and won't beat this. Just telling you the facts. Now, 
not saying you can't beat it. I'm saying it's very hard to beat it. And then you ask yourself, gosh, if I make an extra 5 or 10% a year, but I had to sit there all day, bar by bar trailing, pivot trailing, when I could have literally just set my bracket and played golf, is that worth an extra 5 or 10% a year? To me, it's not. To me, it's not. Set it, forget it, walk away. Some of you like to sit at your desk for six and a half hours a day and lose your eyesight. That's okay. I'm not even being sarcastic. It is totally fine. It's just not for me. And it's not like all or nothing's chump change. It does very, very, very well. Very well. Okay? But you have to be able to handle watching a stock go $2 higher than your target. I don't care. I don't care. Okay? Many do believe they can falsely pick the top. I tell this to people all the time when people ask me a question. Hey, Jared, where do you think XYZ is going to go by the end of the day? I said, if, if I knew the answer to that, then Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett would be shining my shoes. All of them would be, they'd be begging me to shine my shoes because I'd pay that much money if I could genuinely predict the future. Nobody can. You have a predetermined plan, and if you reach the goal of your plan, you smile. If you want to try to improve upon your plan, then you rewrite your plan, and then you follow the new plan. But you never go FOMO. You never get pissed when, you, when your plan works and you make money. If you think you could make more, then you rewrite it, and then you follow the new plan. Okay? All right. Is the 3 and 4 bar play valid in Forex, Options, and Crypto? Man, I get this question all the time. The answer is yes, yes, and I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, yes, and yes. Here it is. Guys, this is the Aussie N, three bar play. Wide bar right here. What is this wide bar doing? Breaking above resistance, followed by a narrow range bar, blasting up to the target area. Okay? Wide range bar breaks resistance right here. Narrow range bar, get in right here and blast higher. This is Aussie N, 4X. Okay? Personally, I don't trade Forex. These are charts that Unmall has traded. Okay? Next. Here's another example, and I'm gonna, I like this chart because it shows several things. Here's a wide range bar breaking out of a consolidation. See it right here? Followed by a narrow range bar and then going higher. The topping tail goes all the way up here. But I put this on here for a reason. One, two, three, four, five bars, followed by a little tiny red bar and a big bar. You see this? Do you know how often, do you know how often I get people telling me they took a three bar play and it looks exactly like this? It's up one, two, three, four, five bars, followed by a little red bar, and then it goes higher and they go, look at the three bar play I just took. Okay, hold on one second, guys. Wait for it. Let me, just give me one second. All right, we're all the way back to the beginning. Bar number one must be a wide range bar igniting a move. Not four or five bars into a move. Not seven bars into a move. Not three bars into a move. The first or second bar of a move, preferably the first. This is very important. Okay. Groundhog's Day. Let's go back. Now, to be fair, three bar plays do not happen that often in Forex. They do not happen that often. Okay, so if you're going to trade Forex, you're going to need another pattern. See, if you trade stocks, you can just trade the three-bar play if you want. Forex, you're going to need another stock, or not another stock. You're going to need another pattern to trade because they don't happen that often. Okay, but here's a wide-range bar breaking out, narrow-range bar blast off. Now, again, here's two false three-bar plays back-to-back. Because these are not igniting bars. It's already at the end of an extended move. Then you get the six, seven, eight bar consolidation. Okay? One more. All right? Here's a stock that was sort of in an uptrend. So this one's a little bit tougher. This one's tougher because this stock was in an uptrend. I say stock, but it's the euro US dollar. Wide range bar takes out support, followed by a narrow range bar, and it continues down here. Okay? Wide bar, narrow bar, drop. Wide bar, narrow bar, drop. Now, see this? You see this right here? This is not a three bar play. This is not a three bar play. Okay. Why? Because this is the fourth bar of the move. One, two, three, four bars. 
Three bar plays don't happen after extended moves. And this is where YouTube pisses me off. People out there are trying to copy this pattern, call it the three bar play, and they're teaching people the wrong way to trade it. Okay? Just so they can get some views on their videos and more. It's pathetic. We're here to make money, guys, right? Not to sit here and, and figure out how not to trade something so you'll lose more money. Okay? Now, there are three. I just showed you three. Forex examples, but I want to reiterate, it happens in Forex, just not that often. It doesn't happen very often. Now, options. You can use three bar plays in stocks and trade the option on it. So Unmall took, for example, the daily chart of this, traded it intraday on the three bar play and also traded the option on it. I do not trade options. So don't ask me what a vertical spread is because I don't know because I don't trade them. All right. My point is, yes, you can use the three bar play in conjunction with options. Now, Unwall would be a better person to discuss that with you, but he's sitting back chilling right now. OK, my point is, is yes, it can be used in conjunction with options. OK, it can be. Now, last but not least. Crypto. I do not trade crypto. I don't. But if you can chart it, then the three bar play is valid. And I mean this sincerely. If you can chart something, pet rocks, you can probably trade the three bar play with it. Probably. I don't trade crypto, but I pulled this chart up off on the internet. And I'm like, wow, that's not bad. Wide range bar takes out one pivot, takes out another pivot, and you have room down here. Okay, I did not trade this chart. All right, but this is a three bar play on a on a chart that I thought was pretty decent. Wide range, again, breaks down right here, takes out this pivot, and this is your tradable void. This is your tradable void. So you could have got in here, your stop here, and it dropped, bounced a little, and dropped. Okay? The point I'm making is I don't trade crypto, so I can't tell you, oh, yeah, check out these awesome three-bar three trades in crypto. But I just literally Googled crypto charts. I was like, oh, there are a few out there. Okay, so yeah, the answer is yes, you can. I don't know how often it happens because I don't trade crypto. All right, now let's move on. Ah, the $64,000 question. How do you find the three and four bar play? How do you find this thing? It's not as convoluted or complex as you might think. Many people think that I have some magic wand or crystal ball that I shake up and pop out three bar plays. Nope, doesn't happen like that for me. You can certainly set easy language on TradeStation or Trade Ideas or whatever it is, and you can try that, but it's not what I do. And you know what's interesting about it? Those of you that are in the chat room every day, I don't use any of that stuff. How often do we find three bar plays in the chat room? Mm, every day, every day, every single day, okay? So what I use, guys, TradeStation is the platform that I use, okay? I use dollar gainers and dollar losers. It's a hot list scan on dollar gainers and dollar losers off of TradeStation. This is just an example from, I don't know, like a month back. I don't like how that's not exactly even. That's better. Okay. Um, so I literally scan this list in the pre-market. And this is what you need to understand, guys. You need to understand that every three-bar play happens because of a daily breakout or a daily gap or a daily breakdown. I want to repeat that. Every three bar play on the one minute, two minute, five minute, 15 minute chart happens because of something that happened on a higher time frame. So for example, I would go down this list and I would click on Tesla. I would click on BYND. I would click on data or CRM and I would look at the charts. I'll show you in a minute. Don't worry. I will show you in a minute. But this is how simple of a scanner I use. I use dollar gainers, which you're seeing here. This is the top 100 gainers. And over here is the top 100 losers. That is it. And I literally just go click, 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 click. And when I'm clicking, my charts populate. I'll show you in a minute. Don't worry. My charts populate. And then they show me what it looks like on the daily and the 60. And I decide, wow, that's a nice gap. That's not a nice gap. And then I build a gap list. You'll see in a second. But before I get to that, this is a new scanner that Live Traders has put out. Unmall has created this. Okay, it's very inexpensive. It's a very basic scan. 
if you take advantage of the PTS today, you get this for free with it. All right, you get it for free. All right, as a standalone product, you'll have to email unmall or info at Live Traders for that. Okay, I just put this out there because this is something we just came out with in the last five days, three days, literally this week. Okay, um, for those of you that don't have TradeStation or don't use dollar gainers and dollar losers, this is a great scanner to use. You can email unmull at livetraders.com or info at livetraders.com to get more information about it. It's very inexpensive. It's a lifetime membership. There's no monthly. There's none of that. It's lifetime. You own it. Okay. All right. Now, watch. Okay. I want you guys to watch. So right here on the left is dollar losers. Down here is a daily chart. Down here is a 60 minute chart. This is from a trade I took on Caterpillar yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. I want you to take note. If you go down this list. Oh, there's cat. I should have probably put a circle around it so you can see it. See it right here? My cursor is on it. That's cat. I click on cat. I look at the daily. I go, wow, that's a nice daily gap. Why is this gap nice? It's gapping under a green bar, under one pivot, under two pivots, and it has room to 125. I know it's small, guys. I probably should have blown it up. I apologize. Okay. But I'm showing you my process. I wake up, get in front of my desk at 845. I'm in, usually on the West Coast, so 545. I go down my gainers and losers list. In this case, losers. I got down to cat and I go, whoa, that's a nice gap. It's gapping under a green bar, under one pivot, under two pivots, and it has at least five or six dollars worth of void. See the 60 minute? Under this area right there, put a line on that. Put a line on that. Under that area, it's going to drop. So wait for it. To show you that this isn't hocus pocus, after the fact bullshit, watch. Watch. 9.02 in the morning, long watches. UPS, TXN, blah, blah, blah. Let's go to short watches. Short watches. Amazon, NSC, ANTM, and CAT. 9.02, 28 minutes before the market opened. 10 minutes before the market opens. CAT is likely the best gap of the day. We should look to find an entry in it. CAT is likely the best gap of the day. We should look to find an entry in it. This is 10 minutes before the market opens. Market's not even open yet. 9.25. Five minutes after this post, these are my favorites for the day. With prices, and guys, I want you to take a quick look at this. I'm going to show you something again. T-Mobile over 80, CMG over 767, and I even said, hey, it's thin and spready. NSC under 185, cat, there it is, cat. I even gave the price that I want to trade it five minutes before the market opens, and I even put it out there on stock twits. My handle is Scoutmaster. For those of you who want to follow me on StockTwits.com, my handle is Scoutmaster. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Scoutmaster1, like the number one, Scoutmaster1, okay? Guys, just real quick on the Instagram front, I have hundreds of people copy my account. This is truth. Over the last couple of years, hundreds of people have tried to copy it. If it doesn't say www.livetraders.com with no phone number, do not go with it. It's some European binary horseshit crap. Okay, they copy my pictures, they copy my likeness. It's ridiculous. I report them when it happens, but it happens all the time. All right, so 902, cat's on my list. 920, I tell everybody in the chat room, like you guys today, cat's my favorite. Then at 925, okay, I write cat under 130.50. I even, at 926, this is still on the West Coast time, say, guys, cat, now remember, where did I find it? I found it from my trade station dollar losers list and I liked the gap and the 60 minute. So I put all this out there. Guys, nobody on the planet does this. I've never been in a chat room ever that they actually put the price out before the market opens. They all put list out. Everybody puts a list out. Nobody does this though. Okay. And then what do I do with my favorites? What do I do with these favorites? I'll show you what I do. I put them on thumbnail watches. The green are the long watches, the red are the short watches, and the blue is the market. Where was where's cat? My number one short watch. Timus was my number one long watch. Let's go back. Timus, CMG, to my two favorite longs, my two favorite shorts, NSC and Cat, right there. 
There we go. Cats on my list right there. NSC is right next to it. All I got to do is look to the left right here. And my favorites are right there. Thumbnail charts, two minutes, and I watch these. And guys, for the first 10 minutes of the market open, that's all I do is stare at these. I just stare at them. My eyes do not leave this chart. I just stare at them. Okay? I just stare at them. Okay? And then what happens? Wait for it. This happens. Okay? You saw it? Where it came from? Cat right there. 60-minute chart. Daily chart. I put it out there in social media. And there's no point in putting it out there if you're not going to trade it. So let's trade it. There's the trade. There it is. A one-minute four-bar play on Caterpillar. People had plenty of time to take this trade because I put it out at 9.02, again at 9.20, and again at 9.25. And if you're on stock twits, again at 9.26. Where did we get it? 130.55. Where did I mention it? 130.50. A nickel off where I mentioned it. Okay? And I told you it's the best gap of the day. That is how you systematically scan for these stocks. The most important part about this is knowing what to look for on the daily chart. If you don't know what a good gap looks like, you'll never be a profitable trader. The PTS course has an entire chapter on gaps. It's about 40 pages just on what a good gap is. Level one gap, level two gap, level three gap, and all of the criteria you need to know what a good gap is. Under a green bar, under two pivots with void. Nice gap, find an entry. Okay, find an entry. I wanna show you one more thing. I am patting myself on the back a little bit here, but I wanna show you one more thing. Guys, how did the favorites list do? Yesterday, this is yesterday. You can pull up these trades from yesterday. That was Timus over 80. CMG over 767, NSC under one and CAT under 130. How'd they do? Well, Timus went up $1.57 from the entry I, I suggested. CMG went up $22 from the entry I suggested. Oh, by the way, it's four minutes before the market opened. NSC dropped $3 and CAT went, what, $2.05. That was my entire favorites list. Every one of them worked. All of them were put out there with prices before the market ever opened. Now, why is this possible and how is that possible? Because I know what good gaps look like. Now, does the entire list work every day? No. Sometimes half the list works. Sometimes 70% of the list works. It's rare nothing works. It's extremely rare. My goal when I put out my favorites list is to get at least two of my favorites. If I have a list of four or five ideas, my goal is to get two, maybe three of them. Why? Because it's really hard for me to get all four of these at the same time. It's really hard. Things happen very quickly. My goal isn't to take all of them. My goal is to take two of them. Okay? Now, some people are asking, well, geez, Jared, that's awesome. But how in the world do you figure out those entry points before the market opens? That's kind of weird. You're, you said you're not Nostradamus. So how do you figure it out? Check out PTS. There's a whole chapter on pre-market charts and what to look for on pre-market charts. I use pre-market charts in conjunction with my gaps. And between pre-market charts and the gap itself, I determine where the entry level should be. Okay? This is yesterday. All right? Yesterday meaning July 24th. If you want to go back and take a look what TEMA, CMG, NSC, and CAT did yesterday, go for it. Okay? And if we talk about today, just throwing it out there, guys. Was Tesla not on our favorites list today? We traded Tesla short, remember? Yes, Tesla was on our favorites list today, right? Tesla was on our favorites list today, okay? All right. The first bar here is about, ooh, I don't know, a dollar? So yeah, I would consider that. If you take a look, if you take a look at CAT on average, what's an average bar on a one minute chart look like on CAT? Average bar on a one-minute chart of Caterpillar, I would say, is probably about 30 or 40 cents, maybe a little less. This one was a dollar, right? So I would say yes, all right? I would say yes, okay? All right. How do you buy Tesla on TradeStation? Easy. You just click, 
click the blue area to buy it and the red area to sell it. It's not, it wasn't hard to borrow today. Okay. All right. Next chapter. Guys, we're only on slide 50. We've been here over an hour and I have 30 more slides to go for. All right. I told you we're going to be here a while. How often do three and four bar plays happen? How often do three and four bar plays happen? Every single day. Every single day. There's not a day that we don't find one in the chat room. Is, are there days we don't take some? Yes. But there's never a day they don't happen. Guys, this is Intel. 15 minute three bar play. Okay. On the same day, a one minute Roku three bar play happened. On the same day, okay, a five minute CDNA three bar play happened. Okay. They happen every day. In case you thought this day was just a particular fluke. Here's another one, all right, from a different day. Here's a one minute on TSS, a one minute on SG, a five minute on Vive, a five minute short on AMTD, a 15 minute on Intel, all on the same day, all on the same day, okay? They happen every day. Here's another day, okay? There's a 15 minute on GM. A 15 minute on ISRG, a five minute on AMTD, a 15 minute on IBM, and a two minute on WB. Okay. Every single day these happen. Guys, we took one today on Tesla. We took one yesterday on Caterpillar. Okay. We took one the day before and the day before. We've taken one every day this week. Sometimes we take two or three. Three bar play. I get this all the time. Well, how often do they happen? Every single day. Every single day. Okay. question is after a gap you see on the daily morning if the if the three or four rifle does not happen do you know if or so how you will take later in the day no I'll, I'll be gone by 10 30 so i won't take it later in the day all right i won't take it later in the day i just got a thousand bucks unwell just broke his plan all right i just got a thousand bucks thank you unwell i love you unless unless you messed up with the target earlier i guess it's 54 ah, maybe he didn't he didn't <laughs> um, it looks like you followed his plan. Nice job, by the way, guys. Nice job on BYND and Ford today. You got 4R today, which is fantastic. And another couple R on that Tesla 6R day today. Well done, guys. All right. Four out of five today. Or sorry, three out of four. Four out of five isn't bad. You'll take an 80% batting or Back to the, the, the point, guys. Three bar plays happen every day. Every single day. Okay? Guys. You can take them on 15-minute charts if you're not happy taking them on one-minute charts at 9.33 because you don't like the market open. Wait till 10 o'clock and take them on 15-minute charts like the GM here, okay? If you don't mind taking them early off the open, then take uh, the WB on a two-minute chart or, you know, take whatever, meaning they happen on every time frame, okay? They happen on every time frame. Now, real quickly, because I'm not going to spend much time on this, all right? Guys, if they happen on every time frame, it's impossible for them to only happen at the open, right? By definition, true or false? By definition, if they happen on every time frame, it's impossible for them to, on, to, to be only available at the open. 15-minute chart, you need at least three bars. That's at least 10 a.m. That's 30 minutes after the open. If they happen on 60-minute charts, it has to be at least 11 or 11.30, at least, right? Okay, so they can happen at all the time. Now, a lot of people, and I'm not going to spend much time on this, a lot of people don't understand what shorting is. Shorting is making money when a stock drops. Can you make money when a stock drops? The answer is yes. Have you guys ever seen the movie The Big Short? Did you ever wonder why it was called The Big Short? Right, Brad Pitt was in that. And uh, what's that guy's name? Goslin, Ryan Goslin, right? There's a whole Hollywood Margot Robbie was in it. Mm, it's nice. There's a whole movie on it. The whole financial crisis. You can make money when stocks drop. It's called shorting. You borrow the shares from your broker at a certain price and you repay them back at a lower price and your broker owes you the difference. It's basically a bet between you and your broker. Technically, it's not your broker because it's somebody else on the other side of that. It's not the point. It's a bet between you and somebody else that you think the stock is going lower and they think the stock is going higher. So they say, all right, I'll let you borrow those shares at $100. 
If they go higher to 101, you owe me that dollar. But if it goes down to 99, they owe you that dollar. Okay? You can, I did a video on this, by the way, on YouTube, so you can, you can search for that. You can look at investopedia.com. You can Google shorting. But the answer is yes, 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 you can make money when stocks go lower. I get this question on YouTube all the time. And some people think I'm like, I'm lying or something. Oh, this guy's a fraud. Nobody makes it. I thought, you know, since when do you buy high and sell low and make money? Like you should see some of the comments I get. It's because it's naive. They just don't understand. Guys, shorting, just so you know has been around since 1828, as we know it in the United States. Before that, it was around in the 1500s. But as we know it in the United States, 1828. So it's not like it happened yesterday, okay? There are a lot of people out there, truthfully, that don't know what shorting is. I'm not knocking them. They just don't know. I only knock them when they think I'm scamming them or something. I'm like, no, this has been around a very long time, okay? Here are a couple examples. We just saw Caterpillar. Here it is again making money with a stock going lower. We got in at 130.55. We got out at like 129. They paid us that dollar fifty, two dollars and fifty cent difference. That made me seven hundred and seventy dollars. Yes, it happens. Okay. Here's another one on UNH you saw earlier. We got in at 265. We got out at like 263. We made 878 bucks. Okay. Yes. Yes, and one more yes, you can make money when stocks drop. It's called shorting. That's it. That's all I that's all I want to get at. I don't want to spend much time on it. I just want people to know that there's nothing funky about it. There's nothing strange about it. There's nothing fishy about it. There's nothing scammy about it. No. Wall Street does it every day. We do it every day. Okay? All right. You must have a margin account to be able to short you must have a margin account to be able to short, okay? At least in America. Overseas, I don't know what their rules are. All right, what platform do I use? I use TradeStation. I get this question, top three most asked question. What platform do I use? I use TradeStation, all right? I use TradeStation. I've been using it for almost 15 years. I love it. I think it's a wonderful platform, okay? Outstanding platform, okay? Now, to that point, to trade unlimited in the United States of America, okay, in the U.S. of A, you have to have at least $25,000 in your account at all times to take unlimited trades. If not, you are limited to three trades a week. Somebody just told me that if you have a cash account, you can take unlimited trades, but there's no margin. There's no leverage to it, all right? Pattern day trading account typically generally has leverage of four to one intraday and two to one overnight. You can open an account for a lot less. Guys, you can open an account for 500 bucks thousand bucks, whatever. Okay. But you'll be limited to three trades per week. Now, if you're overseas, this does not apply to you. If you are overseas, this does not apply to you. If you're outside the United States, none of this applies to you. If you're in the US, that's the limits. Now, what are your other choices? If you don't have 25 grand, what are your choices? Your choices are use an offshore or international broker, a non-US based account. I can't recommend them because they're not US based, but you can use one. Search Google. They're probably out there. Okay. If you're international, you don't have to worry about that because it's not a problem. You can join a prop firm, proprietary trading firm, but you will need a series 57 license and you will be FINRA regulated. You will have to do continuing education through FINRA every year. Okay. And on top of all that, they get to see, this is the truth, I'm not joshing you, they get to see all of your investment accounts, okay? Whatever prop firm you join by law, and you have to pay them for this, right? $25 a month. So let's say you have two trading accounts, an IRA account, and a 401k. What's that, four accounts, okay? They have access. Now, they can't use those or touch your money, okay? But they can see all your investment accounts, too want your license. It's it's kind of crazy what they've done in the last 10 years. But to join a prop firm, usually you can get in them for like three grand. You get around the pattern day trading rule, but you have to take a 200 question test and then be FINRA regulated. I'm not going to get into it. I used to have a prop account years ago. All right. There's nothing wrong with them. Okay. It allowed me to turn $2,100 into a hundred grand. So there's nothing wrong with them, but they get to see your entire life. And I got tired of that. All right. You can open multiple small accounts right? If you have five grand, open um, three $1,700 accounts. Now you get nine trades a week. Okay. 
You get nine trades a week until you get above that 25,000, then just put it all in one account. Or you can swing trade with three trades a week. There's nothing wrong with swing trading, right? Holding stocks overnight, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? I just wanted to go through that. Now, like I said, here is what my platform looks like. As part of my deal with TradeStation, I will at some point in the future likely be giving out my TradeStation platform layout codes. Okay, so it'll be easy for you guys to, to copy if you want. But this is my order entry screen. Okay, my main order entry. This is my level two here on the left. All right, buy, short. I have a five minute, a 15 minute, a two minute, and a one minute on my main screen. And these are my fills. My account number is up here. My account number is down here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's off trade system. Now, this is my scanning monitor right here. Dollar gainers and dollar losers. I have a five minute, a 15 minute, a two minute, a 60, a daily, and then I have the market. I have some watch lists over here. This is old, so ignore it. But when I scan, I just go click, 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 and it populates all of these charts. And that's how I scan. I use dollar gainers and dollar losers on a hot list through TradeStation, and it populates my charts. My thumbnail watch list is over here. I showed this to you before. My long ideas go on the top. My short ideas go on the bottom. And I just stare at it for the first 10 minutes. That people don't believe me. I'm not kidding you. When I put together my gap list, I put them all in these little thumbnails. They're about three inches by three inches, maybe four inches by four inches, something like that. I typically use 27 inch monitors. Um, and I just stare. I just literally sit here with my hand on my, on my computer going, all right, all right. What's somebody commenting in a chat room? Okay. I'm still looking. So when I throw out ideas, it's because those ideas are coming from these thumbnails. Oh guys, watch tech D. Oh guys, watch keys, right? That's all I do. I keep it very, very simple. Okay. And you can see here, this is what it looks like in action, right? You can see my account number is there. My account number is here. My account number is down here. Okay. I trade real money every day, all day. All right. Now, five minute, 15 minute, two minute, one minute. You can see even my bracket orders. When I put my bracket orders, you can see those down here as well. All right. This just happened to be a four bar play we took on AIG, but this is what it looks like in real time. There's the bid. There's the offer. Okay. All right. Just throwing it out there. So that's what my trade station platform looks like. Okay. I use for one last time, I use trade station. Okay. I've been using it for a very long time. I really like it. Okay. All right. Now, this chapter is an important one. It's important because let's be honest and I'm guilty myself. I'm guilty myself. You don't really get to see much of the, the BS online because people want, okay, people want you to think everything's perfect. It's kind of like uh, Facebook. You ever notice people always just, unless somebody passes away, that aside, they always put like their perfect life on there. Instagram's their perfect life. Well, that's the same in trading, okay? That's the same in trading, all right? So... Let's, yes, Pleasantville. That's a good way to put it. I like it, Dave. All right. This is a failed three-bar play on Netflix. You know, because, shocker, they don't all work. This is a nothing wrong with this. Wide-range bar takes out this pivot, takes out this pivot. We get a resting bar. We get in at 365.35. My stop's at 363.10, and boom. Now, in this case, we only lost 20 bucks on it. We didn't take a full stop because after this um, second bar, sorry, third bar right there, we raised our stop loss. We raised it, but it did not work. If you were doing all or nothing like on mall, you would have taken a full stop out. You would have taken a full stop out. Why? There's nothing wrong with this pattern. So before 100 people start going, well, why didn't it work? Why didn't it work? I don't know. There were more sellers than buyers, I suppose, right? I don't know why it didn't work. Okay, wide bar, it did everything right. It broke over the double top. It was near a whole number, a reasonable stop loss on the 15 minute. Yeah, it moved up like $8. That could be a reason. But we could say that about every trade. There's always one little tiny thing that's wrong with it. It's just, it's usually small. It didn't work, okay? And just in case you think it's the only trade in the history of, of our trading that didn't work, nope, let's use AIG. Why did I put this one up here? I put it up here because this is a tale of two cities. 
right? So we have a wide range bar here with a narrow range bar. And look at it. If peekaboo is over 51, just take, I know it's small and I apologize that it's kind of small guys. I do. And I want you to see this because take a look. I was green, almost $300 on this trade. And this is what ultimately ended up happening. I lost, what was that? Three, 360. So I was green. This is one of those trades that went from green to red. You got to sit there and just suck it up. Okay. We got in. Trade popped up. 31 cents. Looking good. You're sitting there going, sweet. We're going to hit target. We need another 40, 50 cents. We're golden. Blah, 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 blah. You're thinking about how you're going to spend your money. Blah, 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 blah. And five, six minutes later, you're going, oh, right? This is a failed three bar play. I put this in here to show you that they don't all just like peekaboo by a penny and roll over. Sometimes they tease you. They, they build your hopes and dreams and then they roll over on you. You have to be able to handle this. I lost 360 bucks on it. Oh, well, I lost uh, 300 and some bucks on Western Call today, LUV today. As long as you win more than you lose, or when you win, you win more than you lose. Okay? So that's AIG. Oh, here's another one. All right? So, didn't work. Take a look at it. Take a look at the 15 on TME. See the wide bar, narrow bar. See it right there? See the little tiny bottoming tail where my cursor is? Again, I apologize. It's it's small. Okay? What did I do here? I overlaid the 15. Now, this is what it looked like when we took it. Look at the right-hand side, guys. Okay? Look at the right-hand side of the screen. This is the pattern we took. Tell me that's not textbook. That's beautiful. It's perfect. It's awesome. It's incredible, right? This is what happened 30, 40 minutes later. So we took a great pattern in real time. We did nothing wrong. Like it was a good pattern. And then 40 minutes later, it went against us. So I took a picture of it when it was working, but it ultimately turned the corner and stopped us out, right? So when we took it, it looked like that. It looked like that. It looked like that. I took this picture an hour later. So you guys can see it turned around and didn't work. Okay. They don't all work but they don't all have to work. They don't all need to work. You only need to bat 50% on two to one, right? If you lose 300 on a loser and win 600 on a winner and you bat 50%, you just made 300 bucks. That's a, that's a good number, right? In terms of batting average, 50%, win two, lose one, win two, lose one, right? Win two to one, lose one to one, okay? Now, this is the stuff when I mean nobody talks about, I mean nobody talks about, okay? I don't know why, but they just don't. And this is one of the areas where I know when I go into a certain chat room when somebody's full of shit or not, when they're completely fake. And these are the situations and times where I know it. What we have here, guys, is a beautiful three-bar play, right? A nice gap down, a wide bar, a narrow bar, and oh my gosh, this stock wasn't good. It was outrageously incredible 3601 or i should say it should be 3599 let's change that do it in real time okay 3595 or 91 i'm losing my mind 3599 right this thing dropped to like 3350 what's that come out two dollars and fifty cents on a 35 cent stop what's that like eight to one on your money seven to one on your money okay wow think about this for a second that's a perfect play, and it worked. But no fill equals no money, no sugar. Well, how many shares printed under $36? 4,800 and then very few. Remember, you're not the only person in the world that wants to short this stock. You're not. I tried to get this, and I got skipped. Doesn't matter how far it goes. I didn't make any money. You never see this. Every time I go to a chat room, they, they somehow get filled on every single trade they take. Every one of them. And I know when they didn't get filled because I can see the shares that are printed. Oh, yeah, I took 4,000 shares. That Well, where did those shares exactly print again? You know, could you show that to me? No. This really happens. Okay? And it happens more often than you think. Here's another example. Guys, how beautiful is that two-minute three-bar play on Baidu? Okay? Yeah, exactly. I love that, Kobina. Thank you. Yes, uh, dark pools. I remember one particular educator who's been around a very long time saying, yes, 
I'm the uh, second highest volume trader on the NASDAQ. So I have access to dark pool. I'm like, I worked on Wall Street and not all Wall Street banks have access to dark pools, but you know, you're special, right? It's unbelievable, the, the, the horse shit that people play. Anyway, okay. Wide bar, narrow bar drop. This is a perfect pattern. There is absolutely, utterly nothing wrong with this three bar play. And it worked. It worked. Okay. But you're not getting filled at 177.49. How many shares? Zero. 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41. Zero shares. The only way you got this is if you put your order at like 51, 52, or 53. And then you're anticipating. And that brings out a whole nother ball of wax. Right out of the PTS course, we talk about anticipating. But take a look, guys. In a 30 cent range, this stock printed 100, 200, 300, 600, 900 shares in a 30 cent range. You're not getting filled. And if you do get filled because you were dumb and you used a market order, you would have gotten filled like 30 or 40 cents lower, right? 30 or 40 cents lower. That's crazy. This happens, okay? Here's another example. ZM, 10 minute three bar play last month. We broke under this support area. We had room down to here. Wide bar, narrow bar, drop. I called it in the room, 97.50 by 99, right? Called it in the room. There's my order. There's my order. 97.57. I anticipated by seven cents. I didn't even try for 97. I tried to get in sooner. I even gave it 24 cents worth of room. I started my order at 97.57. Okay. And I put the limit down at 97.33. And I got zero shares of it. Zero shares. That's real trading, guys. And I want you to also take note. I was only looking for a couple hundred shares. I wasn't even looking for a thousand shares. Okay. My point I'm making is, is most of the time, like 98%, you're going to get filled. But this does happen today. Here's another example. I got $600 out of Tesla. I should have got 750. Why? I had my platform just locked up on me. It's locked up. There's nothing I can do about that. My internet connection's 300 meg. My computer is new. It's not on my end. Once in a while, you'll have a tech issue. Once in a while, trades will skip you. Once in a while, you'll take slippage. Hence, why I called this chapter, not all trades work plus BS. Because trading can be BS sometimes. How many people, how many places have you been to in this industry where people talk about this topic? I have a whole video on it. It's called Why Trading is So Hard. Did a whole YouTube video, why trading is so hard. We talk about topics like this. Nobody wants to talk about these things because they're worried it might make them look bad. No, it actually makes you look like a real trader when you get skipped. Why? Because it actually effing happens, right? It actually happens. If you never get skipped, I'm really skeptical. Now, you if you get skipped too much, then I don't think you're a good trader. But if you never get skipped, and you're not trading BAC every day because then you'd never get skipped, I'd be very concerned, right? It does happen. Now, it shouldn't happen every day. It should happen rarely, but it will happen. Your platform will freeze occasionally, like today. Your internet will go down occasionally, like today. Your computer will have a virus scan right in the middle of the day randomly sometimes. That's the BS part of trading, okay? Because we can't compensate for that. You can try to mitigate, like I tried to get in at 97.57. I tried to mitigate, try to get in a little early because I knew it was spready and it still skipped me. I did the best I could. You just move on. Like when an HFT shakes you out, you just say too good, tip your cap and you move on. Today, I get frustrated in real time, but I'm over it. I'm over it. What happened today in Tesla is what happened today in Tesla. There's nothing I could do about it. You move on. Okay. Now. One quick comment, somebody saying, for example, BYND is a hard to borrow stock. Yes, BYND is a hard to borrow stock. But in most platforms, guys, it says HB, hard to borrow, or HTB, hard to borrow, okay? You, there's a place that you can usually locate shares, okay? Short locate. All right, let me see if I have this up. 
if I have it up, I'll try to I'll try to show you guys real quickly. I may not have it quick access because I don't want to waste too much time when I'm doing this. But let me see if I have it quickly here. If I have it quickly, I'll show it to you. But I may, like I said, I may not. Give me one more second. Um, let me see. Yes. No. Yes. I do. Good. Give me one sec, guys. Watch. On my platform on TradeStation, I can go to my intraday short locate. And I can request. Notice they gave me short ZM, but they didn't give me GNFT. Okay. All right. You see this? ZM, GNFT. Door, I know you're perfect. I know you're perfect. When you say get real, man, that's your fault entirely. Because you've never had an update randomly out of nowhere because I know you're perfect, right? Because, you know, BS never happens. Sometimes, you know, like when good things happens to bad people. But I know I, I'm just one of the rare people where I'm not perfect. I live amongst a world of seven and a half billion perfect people, though. Anyway, back to the intraday short locate. Sometimes you get approved, like here, and sometimes they reject you. So this is an example where I got 1,000 shares of ZM, which was the stock you just saw, but they, they didn't have any shares of GNFT because I'm not perfect. If I were perfect, they probably had 2,000 shares of this for somebody else, right? But notice the interest rate, guys, okay? I don't pay any money on this intraday. See, I get a lot of people saying, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Almost never is there a fee for it. Now, if you hold it overnight, that's different. If you hold it overnight, that's different, Okay. But you're, this is a good example because you can see one where I did get the shares and one where I didn't get the shares. But it just says create request. I type in the symbol, the account number, and you're good to go. Most platforms have a short locate. Okay? Most platforms have a short locate. All right? Now, there we go. Back to this. Give it a second. This was ZM. So you can see where it says hard to borrow at the top. And I just showed you I got 1,000 shares of it. I still got skipped, though. Right? I still got skipped. Okay. Now, we're getting towards the end. We're at the summary. All right? This is just a review, guys. Longs and shorts. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a couple more little things. All right? Wide bar, multiple narrow bars, continuation move. Yes, you can make money going lower. Yes, you can make money when a stock goes lower. Okay? Caterpillar from yesterday, many of you have seen this like 19 times now. Yes, you can make money when a stock goes lower. Wide bar, two narrow bars, drop. All right, here's one on Halliburton from this, this was this week too. Perfect, this is this week also. All right, here's wide range bar on Halliburton. Now note, see that right there, that pre-market chart? I really like how higher today, but not sure of the entry yet, stay put. I, I, Type this out there at 9.26 in the morning on social media. I really like how higher today. I'm not sure of the entry yet. Stay put. If you were in the chat room, well, you got it. 23.14 by 22.90. Right? I, I put it out there. What was that? 9.38. Okay? Wide bar. See the bottoming tail? I loved the bottoming tail. Wide bar, two narrow range bars, and blast off. Okay? It does. It moves slowly. It's a slow moving stock. I agree. Okay? But this was before the market ever opened. Ever opened, I was on how. This was a really nice gap that day. Okay, now I'm going to show you something from several years ago. All right, I'm I'm saying this one more time. I don't use prop accounts. This was like six or seven years ago. But I'm showing this to you for the international traders out there, the prop traders out there, and the people with small accounts. This is for you. Some of you have seen this before, but this is for you guys. It doesn't take a lot to make a lot, but I want to, I want to qualify this. When I did this, when I turned 2,165 into 51 grand, I was not a new trader. If you are a new trader with a $2,000 account, you are not going to turn it into 30, 40, 50 grand in your first year or two. You'll be lucky if your account is still 2,000 by the end of the year after you pay commissions and platform fees. I'm telling you though that it's not the amount of money you have. It's how you trade. It's not the amount of money you have. It's how you trade. Okay? But I did not do this as a new trader. I want that to be very clear.
because I'm I'm tired of the get rich quick people. I get emails. I get like almost 100 emails a day, guys. And I'm tired of getting emails from people going, hey, Jared, I have $700. Do you think I can make a living in this business? Maybe five years from now, maybe. But not right now, you can't. You're just not good enough to turn 700 into 10 or 20 grand. You're just not good enough. And that's, that's normal. You're not good enough to beat Tiger Woods either. Well, because he's been playing golf for 35 years and you've never played before, right? Same here. It doesn't take a lot. I've done this multiple times in my career, okay? So it's not about the money you start with, but it is about the experience and education that you have. It's very important, guys, to understand that. It's very, very important to understand that. You can do it. You're just not going to do it in your first year or two. It's going to take you a couple, two or three years to get good at this. Okay? Yes, swing trading is in PTS. Okay? So I wanted to bring that up, not to rub it in, because I don't want you guys thinking 4,000% is normal. On a retail account, if you make 1% to 200% a year, you did a very, very, very good job. This account was leveraged like 50 to 1. Right? At one point, it was leveraged 300 to 1. Okay? but I still never took more than one to 2% risk ever. All right, now let's leave you guys with this. This is important. Okay, this is just a summary of everything we talked about today. Not everything, but a lot of things so that you can kind of take a picture of this slide, if you will, and this is kind of a, just a basic summary, all right? The three and four bar play is valid in all time frames, from one minute micro charts to long term yearly core charts and everywhere in between. Answer that question. Check. They can happen at any point during the day, not just at the market open. I prefer them at the market open mainly because I only trade the first 60 minutes of the day. All right. Check. Answer that question. They are both valid long and short. Yes, you can make money shorting. Three bar plays are valid long and short. Check. Patterns happen every day, okay? They happen every single day. Check. The wick, the topping tail, the bottom, it's part of the bar. You have to consider the wick. It's part of the bar, okay? Check. The entry on a three or four bar play is the nanosecond. That bar three trades above the high of bar one. Whatever the high of bar number one is, whatever the high is, the second that bar three trades above that high, you are in the trade. Your stop loss goes below bar number two. Check. Yes, it works in Forex, but it doesn't happen very often. Check. You can use options to trade the three and four bar play. I don't trade options, but you can use them. Check. Okay. My target is always two to one risk to reward with the goal of a 50% batting average. Now, I don't always get two to one. Sometimes I fuddle around and sell a little bit too soon or make a mistake but my goal is to get two to one and my goal is to have a 50 percent batting average check I'm trying to think if there's any other questions i missed out there on social media because i get lots and lots of questions okay so i'm getting down towards the end and i'm going to save a couple minutes to answer questions um, for you guys To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.